Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, part of IBM Europe. This is the second of three movies looking at common misunderstandings about power processors. In this one we're going to be looking at are logical CPUs real and what is SMT, simultaneous multi-threading. We'll actually look at the second question first. In the first movie we looked at the various components inside a Power 6 processor. And here we can see a couple of the things like the level 2 cache and the two CPUs on the single chip. If we now look at an individual CPU, we'll find that the instruction set, the instructions that a CPU can perform, are broken up into several units, and the different units inside the CPU actually handle the different instructions. So we find that there's fixed point, is what we tend to know as integer mass, add one to a register, add two register together, or take away the number you first thought of sort of operations. Then there's floating point mass, so that's what the high performance guys like when they're doing calculations. We have load and store operations, which are loading data from memory or putting it back into memory, storing it away again. We have compare and branch operations, they give us the if statements in our code. And with Power 6 we actually have a new one called the decimal floating point. This allows us to do very high precision maths uh, typically used for calculating money. But each of these different processor units can actually operate at the same time independently if the CPU is given the right mix of instructions. We also find that some of them appear so often that we actually, inside the CPU, implement more than one processor unit to do the same thing. So we have two floating point, two fixed point, and two load and store operations. So that while we're doing maths on two registers, we could be loading from memory the next number we actually need to operate on, again, to increase our concurrency. Now in this diagram, we're trying to show you what happens with our traditional processor. On the left, we have these columns. Each of these little squares or oblongs are different instructions for the different programs. We have five programs here running in different color and there's a run queue of five and we're going to run this first light blue application by taking its instructions. In the middle here we have you can see FX0 and FX1. This is the fixed point 1 and uh, 0 the two different processing units inside the CPU. And as we go from left to right, we're operating different processor cycles. So each clock cycle we're doing different things. If you can imagine, we're going to do this operations here, and the next clock cycle we'll do these here, and so on as we move left to right. In the first clock cycle, we actually find the instruction mix is just right, so we're actually doing some integer maths, we're doing a floating point maths, and we're doing a compare and branch. In the second one, we can do two operations. In the third one, we've got a wait here. Um, we need data from memory, it's not in a register, so we have to wait for the cache to catch up and supply us the data. Then we do two more operations, then we find that it's time to schedule off the light blue process and bring in the yellow process but we have to save all the registers that takes a clock cycle and then we have to bring in the new registers for the new process that takes a clock cycle and then we're off and running the second process the yellow process now we find in here out of all the possible instructions that we could have completed in these clock cycles there's an awful lot of white space in here if only we could get the programs to provide us two integers, two floating points, two load and stores every single clock cycle, we could actually make the processor a lot busier than it currently is. So somebody in development decided, well, can't we run another process using these unused processor units? And that's what we have with SMT, simultaneous multi-threading. We're actually going to run a further thread of execution or another process at the same time on the same CPUs by using those processor units which aren't actually used. And we'll look at that on the next foil. Now in this example we're running two processes at the same time, the blue and the yellow. 
We still have a run queue of five, but we're actually running two processes at the same time. And the yellow process here is using parts of the CPU where the blue process doesn't actually need it. If they both want to use the same processing unit at the same time, well, one of them will have to do it this clock cycle, and one of them will have to wait for the next clock cycle. Now we can see on the third clock cycle here, when the blue process is in a wait state, waiting for the memory, the yellow process has his data in registers, so he can carry on processing. In fact, he gets all of the processing units that are available at that point. Later on, we decide that the blue process needs to stop, and we're going to run now the red process. Again, when we're saving the registers for the blue process and bringing in the red process registers, the yellow process can actually carry on running on the CPU and he can use whatever processing units he actually wants to at that point. So now I hope you can see that comparing this to the previous slide, we're actually getting a lot more processing done. We're at every clock cycle, we're getting almost twice as many units of work instructions actually completed at one time. And this is what simultaneous multi-threading is all about. Now before we go on any further, I better explain that this diagram is for illustration purposes. If we have a highly busy threaded application, like a very busy web server, or we have a database running lots of simultaneous SQL statements, or lots of users connected and running their applications, then we find in the Power 5, typically SMT gave us about a 30% improvement in throughput. And with Power 6, because of internal changes and the scheduling of the instructions, we actually get something like 40% improvement with SMT. So we have a single CPU here operating but it's running two programs at the same time. Now, an operating system in the past was very happy to schedule one process onto the CPU, but now we need two processes on this one physical CPU. And the way we do that is we describe to the operating system that this physical CPU actually is running two logical CPUs. So this is what the logical CPU really means. It's asking the operating system to schedule more than one, in fact two, processes at the same time to one physical CPU. We're now going to look through a series of commands to investigate the physical CPUs and the logical CPUs and what happens when we switch SMT on and off. Here we have a command that we're going to look at and look at the number of processes. So lsdev minus capital C, C, processor. Now this is confusing for a completely different reason. Earlier this logical partition was running with four dedicated CPUs and it's now running with two dedicated CPUs. So although it lists four, you'll see that two of them are actually available. The other ones are only known about because it, they were switched on earlier on. Now a number of commands can give us a false impression of what is actually going on the machine. An example is if you run SAR and ask it to give us details of the CPUs. It gives us the impression here that there are 0, 1, 2, 3 CPUs. This line is the average of those uh, running on the machine. And it gives the impression that there's four CPUs. There's a little clue up here where it says L CPU equals 4. So this is logical CPUs. But if you don't notice that, you can be left with the impression that you have four genuine CPUs. We can also use a command like my own tool nmon and we look at the number of CPUs here. Again these are logical CPUs and we can see that there's a couple busy and a couple not used at the moment. It gives you the impression again that there's four CPUs. If we use Topaz Again at the top left here we have CPUs and we have four of them and again that gives us the impression that we got four CPUs when we don't really. We can run a command like lpassstat minus i 
and here we can see that we have dedicated CPUs and we have SMT switched on, this SMT at the end of the line. Now these are dedicated so our entitlement is two so we have two CPUs allocated here and we can see online CPUs is two. We can do this, the maximum here is for doing a dynamic CPU add and the same down here for four CPUs we can go up to that. So there's some fours in here and again that can confuse people they start thinking that they actually have four CPUs. So it's this line here that tells us that we have two CPUs and SMT is switched on. If we look at a command like mpstat Again, it looks like there's four CPUs on this system, doesn't there? Zero, two, three. Very easy to get confused. And up here, it's telling us again a little clue: these are logical four CPUs. Now, if I run a tool like Enmont, and we're watching these four CPUs logical CPUs of course. We can actually see the processes that I'm running. I'm running something in the background just to generate workload here. But they do bounce around along the logical CPUs. Move around now and again. There's just two programs running. And we can see that sometimes it runs the two applications on the same CPU. This 2 and 3 is the same physical CPU. But it will try and move them to different CPUs and that's an optimization that it's doing there. It's better to the two applications to actually run on two different CPUs. If they were using two logical CPUs on the same physical CPU then sometimes they'd be competing for those processing units inside the CPU. So it prefers to separate them onto two physical CPUs if it has different physical CPUs for every application that's running. If we added more applications, of course, it would be forced to use all the logical CPUs to get the work done. Now I'll just go to this little window down here. And I run this command here. Well, let's just try it without options to start with. This is SMT control. SMT CTL. And it's telling us that uh, currently uh, SMT is enabled and processor 0 has two processors logical processors bound to it and processor physical processor 2 has two processors bound to it now we can use this command to to switch smt off and if we do that we'll notice that the n1 tool here and topaz would do the same it actually switches us now to show us the two real CPUs and they only have one logical CPU on each. So I've switched from apparently four CPUs to two CPUs but we still haven't actually changed the CPUs we're using we've just switched it out of SMT mode and we're now using one logical processor on each physical processor. And we can switch that back on the minus M is the mode and the minus W is when and we say we'll do it right now. We could do it at boot time as well. We can see the workload splitting out again. One final command to look at is mpstat minus S. And if we run that Then we can see for a physical processor, we can see the two logical CPUs connected to it and the split of work between those two logical CPUs. So we can see in this case, the first one is doing a lot of work and the second one doing some work. Another thing to note is that the two logical CPUs will always appear in the same logical partition. The physical CPU is allocated to a logical partition when we've got shared CPUs and so both of the logical CPUs always appear together in the same logical partition. Okay, well I hope that's been useful. Are logical CPUs real? No, they are not. 
or a clever device to allow two threads to run at the same time intermixed in the CPU. And what is SMT? A very clever piece of technology that gives us between 30 and 40% performance boost if we have enough threads of execution, enough programs running at the same time.